All right. I think it's time we came back to this guy and talked a little bit more about what spiders are. If you recall, we said insects have six legs and three body parts. And when we looked at this spider, we saw it didn't fit this mold very well. Well, I have a confession to make. This actually isn't an insect at all. Spiders belong to a class of arthropods called arachnids. Unlike insects, spiders have eight jointed legs and two body parts. So you're probably saying, Dylan, why are you putting arachnids in a video called insects? I just feel that being a major predator of insects, spiders deserve at least some mention. They're in the same phylum as insects, and many people mistakenly call them insects or bugs. So, spiders. Out of all the creatures in the world, I think spiders are probably hated by more people than any other animal. I never really understood it myself. I've always found them to have a strange charm to them. Any animal capable of spinning a web this intricate out of a substance that's stronger than steel has my admiration. Maybe it's the eight legs that creep people out, or the ability to bite, or the webs they spin, or maybe it's a combination of all these factors. More than anything, though, I think it's the fact that some species have a very potent venom that's capable of killing a person in just one bite. Probably most notorious for this in the United States is the Black Widow, a spider that got its name from the habit of the female to sometimes eat the male after they mate. They're very easily identified by the red hourglass shape on the bottom of their abdomen. The Black Widow, although extremely venomous, is not as dangerous as legend makes them out to be. They're very, very shy of people and prefer to live in dark places. The other dangerous spider we have here is the brown recluse. They're most famous for the nasty bites they inflict, where the flesh around the bite spot gets necrosis. This symptom of their bites is fairly rare, though. Most bites from this spider show nothing more than any other spider bite would. Necrotic wounds are often misdiagnosed as brown recluse bites. Many times it's actually an infection known as MRSA for short. The brown recluse is a very unaggressive spider, and bites usually only occur when one is pressed against the skin. I find brown recluse spiders to be extremely interesting. They often live in large numbers, so where one is found, it's not uncommon to find several more. Black widows and brown recluses have some powerful venom, but they pale in comparison to the bite of this spider. The harvestman or daddy longlegs. It has the most toxic venom of any spider in the world, but their mouths are too small to bite. Wait, what? This thing is the most venomous spider in the world? Actually, no. That's an old wives' tale. The harvestman is neither a spider, nor does it have any venom at all. They belong to a group of arachnids called Opiliones, which is comprised of more than 6,400 different species of harvestmen. They got the nickname Daddy Long Legs because of the long legs they have. These legs are extremely important to the harvestmen, not just for movement, but also as sensory organs. During late summer and fall, they turn up in large numbers in my backyard. In fact, the name harvestman is derived from the habit of these guys to show up around the harvest season. Another extremely common arachnid around the backyard is the wolf spider. This spider doesn't spin a web, but instead goes out and actively hunts for prey. There are several different species of wolf spider commonly seen. This forest wolf spider here can grow to be one of the larger spiders seen around my backyard. She may have a bit of a creepy look to her, but you're actually looking into the eyes of a very loving mother who rivals many other animals in childcare. She carries her eggs around with her in this large white sack, never leaving them until they hatch. Once they do hatch, they climb her legs and crowd on her abdomen, where she continues to carry them around and keep them safe from predators. See, even spiders have a loving side to them. There are so many different types of spiders, I could really go on all day about them. From the littlest jumping spider to my personal favorite, the black and yellow argiope, spiders are awesome predators. While we're on the topic of non-insects, I have something else to get out of my system. This thing is a millipede. It belongs to a class of arthropods called Myriapoda. I simply love these things. They look like something straight out of a science fiction movie. In retrospect, I probably should have left these guys out of this video altogether, seeing as how I'm not really going to go into any detail about them. But they look really cool, and this is my video, so if I want to look at millipedes, I will. And you guys can't stop me. So don't try. Anyway... Back to insects. They're the stars of this video, not spiders and millipedes. There are many types of insects that feed strictly on other insects. These predatory insects are some of the coolest in both behavior and looks. The assassin bugs are an incredibly diverse group coming in a wide array of colors and shapes. The most famous of these is the giant wheel bug. 
As the name suggests, they get fairly large and are pretty ferocious predators. They use their beak-like mouth to stab their prey and inject their lethal saliva into it. This saliva liquefies the internal organs of the prey and the assassin bug sucks it up. When threatened, the giant wheel bug makes a squeaking-like noise similar to that of many beetles. Keep messing with one and you'll get a nasty surprise. They have no problem stabbing you with that beak they feed on. While the saliva isn't lethal to humans like it is to smaller creatures, it is nonetheless very painful. Here you can see a drop of the saliva as it attempts to inject me. For almost every niche that an insect has filled, there's another insect waiting to eat them. A close relation of the assassin bugs is the ambush bug. These tiny insects hide in flowers and grab insects when they land on them. Even the sky isn't safe. Dragonflies are masters of their domain, being able to catch prey right out of the air. They feed heavily on pests like mosquitoes. Similar to the dragonfly is the damselfly. These delicate insects come in a variety of colors and feed on many of the same things as dragonflies. Dragonflies and damselflies are usually seen as a valuable addition to the backyard because of their feeding habits. No one likes a yard full of mosquitoes. Even with the dragonflies and damselflies in my backyard, I still don't have to look very far to find one of these little bloodsuckers. To get a good look at one, I'll have to sacrifice a bit of my own. Here we see a female mosquito drinking blood from my arm. Mosquitoes, male and female, feed on nectar and can live without drinking blood at all. The females need the nutrients in the blood only for egg production. I don't really mind this species of mosquito that much. The one that bothers me is this one. Called the tiger mosquito, this species is capable of carrying the West Nile virus. The tiger mosquito isn't even native to the United States. This is what is known as an invasive species. It was introduced accidentally from Asia and has spread rapidly across the southern half of the United States. This species far outnumbers the native mosquitoes in my yard, and they bite at any time of the day, whereas the native mosquitoes usually only bite around dusk. These guys are a real nuisance. So we've kind of been rushing through all these predatory insects, and I don't mean any disrespect to them, but there's one more insect that I'm dying to talk about, and it dwarfs the rest of these in predatory habits.